One of the most common applications of industrial process automation is counting of parts. And machine vision is actually a very popular technology that you can use to count parts for whatever application that you have. But what are the other ways in which you can count parts and where does machine vision have certain advantages or disadvantages? Hi, my name is Raghva Kashipa, CEO of Qualitas Technologies. And in this video, I'm gonna unpack the different ways you can do counting for parts in any kind of industrial setting. So we all know that counting of parts, especially when there is a number of parts that need to be counted, either being for, let's say, uh, part counting for packing purposes. You have you know, a certain uh, product that needs to be in the hundreds or thousands within a packet, which needs to get shipped to your customers, either in bulk or in small parts. Or it could be you know, you're counting certain items that are moving across any kind of material movement or conveyor or uh, assembly line. There are a number of different settings in which counting is an application that would help you with any kind of process automation. But where can machine vision really play a hand in automating this counting process? Well, before we answer that, let's look at the different alternatives as to how you can do counting. Some common applications, let's say if it's to um, count certain small parts, which need to be bagged or packaged is a weight-based counting system. So you know, you know, you have a load cell, you have a certain uh, unit weight that you're aware of, and you know, you multiply that by the number of uh, units that need to be packaged, and you know, based on that total weight, you cut it off. You know, the feeding or or, or some kind of a signal, or it could even be manual that triggers. Um, the threshold beyond which the count or it could even be manually done where you know you just start adding parts and until the total weight reaches the count uh, that you're looking for. Um, the second way is to do some kind of a sensing based um, counting mechanism. So let's say you have a physical part that's moving on a conveyor that isolated and separated out and you have some kind of a laser sensor or some sensor that detects the part presence in front of that sensor. And as the parts pass in front of the sensor, you have some trigger that then um, automates or increments the count. And thus, you know, when a certain uh, count is reached, you can take an action like stopping the material flow or packaging or sealing or whatever else you want to do. Now, the limitation of both these, um, let's, let's, now let's look at the limitation of, either, of, of both these. So when, it look, when you're dealing with a weight-based counting mechanism, you're obviously restricted to what can be weighed in a load cell. So when you're looking at large parts, maybe steel pipes stacked up against you know, um, a certain rack, you're not, you're, it, it, it will be much harder to you know, take a weight-based uh, counting approach for you know, how many steel pipes were in, in that rack. Um, on the other hand, you know, something much lighter, you know, if because of um, the, um, the, the tiny parts and the, 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 the granularity in, in terms of the unit weight, you may be off when you actually use a weight based uh, mechanism because of some, you know, rounding off error. So that accuracy can get affected when you use weight-based mechanisms, either with very large parts or because of impracticality or with very small parts because of you know, tiny weights and very lightweight parts. Um, the sensor based on the other hand requires you to have certain kind of motion because you know, the, it assumes the part is moving in front of the sensor and thus the sensor needs to detect it as it moves and, and crosses the sensor's path. So if you don't have any kind of motion, then obviously a sensor-based counting mechanism wouldn't make sense. And that's where vision really comes in. So it has, the it has the advantage of both these. So it can be deployed on a stationary setting where you, you, know, you have certain um, items you know, racked or stored and it's in a, in a stationary position. And with image processing, you'll be able to count the number of parts that are stored in that uh, storage uh, uh, area. Um, on the other hand, if you want to use some kind of a motion-based uh, counting, you can still do that. You can have a, a, either a sensor-triggered 
uh, counting mechanism or just you know using good old video analytics and frame-based image processing to identify how many parts have moved in front of the camera as well um, and you know because it's more human like because just like a human would you would isolate each part and then count each individual object image processing would match much more closely to the human mechanism but with a lot more accuracy and flexibility that would you would get uh, both in terms of stationary counting as well as in in motion counting so um, if you have a counting application do think about machine vision and um, it's likely that machine vision has a great fit for your particular application thanks hope this video is useful <laughs>